Welcome back to Life and Hair. I'm hanging around my special place again, another day in the life of a wig wearer, coming to you straight from the heart and uncensored. And it occurred to me the other day as I was looking at my wig collection, I was musing about how I was first introduced to wigs. Now, I always knew that women of other ethnicities wore wigs regularly and it was a natural part of their culture in a way that it wasn't so much around the area where I lived within my own life. I was introduced to those name brand wigs that we all know and love, brands like John Renault, Renault of Paris, Noriko, that sort of thing. And those types of wigs were always described as being medical grade wigs. And that kind of always suggested to me that those wigs were for women who were suffering with hair loss. And they're a beautiful thing. There's no doubt about it. Look at this, John Renault Giselle. Giselle has been with me for a very long time. She's amazingly natural. And the most amazing thing about Giselle is her lace front and her scalp. She is the sort of style that I can put back very easily, like so, in her back. And truly, when I look at photographs of myself or I look at myself in the mirror, it looks absolutely like scalp to me. And you know, as regular viewers, how that has enriched my life and solved my horrendous problem of hair loss that I have been struggling with for the majority of my adult life. But it's not just medical wigs that I'm interested in. It's not just wigs for disguising hair loss. Actually, I'm very interested in those wigs available that are just an accessory. Like, I would accessorise with earrings, jewellery and whatever else. They tend to be a little bit more dramatic. They don't seek to be always low density and realistic looking. In the beginning of my previous video, I was wearing one of those very wigs and I got a lot of comments about her. She is an Outre wig and her name is Mikaela. And you can see by the picture that she's got a lot more hair and a lot more texture than what I was used to. And also she had ear to ear lace front. I happen to have cut her lace front, but I also bought another one at the same time called Solstice, which is, th which is this, Solstice. And Solstice's lace front is still intact, and I would like to show her to you. So you can see, this is exactly how Michaela came. Ear to ear, deep lace, she has baby hairs cut into her and that's something that I'm not kind of used to. But I want to discuss my thoughts and my initial impressions of Michaela because she rather excited my senses and she made me think about all those artistic and theatrical possibilities open to me when I was getting dressed up. Getting dressed up in a way that I never have before. Um, I have absolutely no interest in your run-of-the-mill casual presentation. Don't ask me why I have come into my 50s like this. It seems to be something that was sort of woken up in me somehow. I was very motivated to finally lose my excess weight. And along with that, a complete passion for exploring different ways of looking. 
saying different things with my appearance. A lot of people might say, wow, are you seriously thinking as a 53 year old <laughs> of wearing this, which might actually suit a 20 something instead, as the photograph suggests. Let's just look inside the cap and see what we actually get with Michaela. So the first thing I noticed, and you must excuse me, I have my light on, but the cap is actually black and the strap is black. There is this elasticated strap, it hooks onto the back of your head and the tension is runs from the strap along that lace front and round and it suctions that unit onto your head <laughs> in a very beautiful way. So you really feel secure in her. She also has something that the usual wigs that I know and love don't have. She has got combs ready sewn in. A large one at the back and two smaller ones at the ears. There is a tab, but there are no metal stays with this. The wefts are um, more widely spaced and they're a little bit more kind of robust. They've got a few more fibers sewn into them. And the cap is elasticated as we're used to. This one happens to have a lace parting and a lace front, as you can see. Let's just put her on and kind of fiddle about as I like to do. This is, this is how I like to spend some of my time. I'm going to take Giselle off, put Michaela on and see what we think. Take a look at this lace front that I've cut. You can see that there are some shorter hairs around the, the lace front area. I think they add quite a lot of naturalness to this. And I'm going to just separate those curls with my fingers to give her a little bit more volume um, a little bit more body. Believe me when I tell you ladies that when I was in my late teens, actually from 15 onwards and I started to grow my hair, my hair was very, very similar to this. I was able to layer those curls, you know, I washed my hair and I would diffuse my hair um, and, and let the ringlets and the curls fall naturally. I was known for my curly hair and I'm very comfortable with curly hair and that's actually something that I found difficult to find in the wig companies that I know of. I know that there are other wigs that are curly like Curl Appeal, Curl Up uh, by Gabor, um, Jamila Plus is also a very curly style. But look at the wildness of this. I actually feel comfortable like this. I feel like she like she does suit my ethnic origin very well. You don't always want to be wearing the very straight, sleek hair. Sometimes you just want to get back to your roots, get back to your old self, how you remember yourself as being. There's a tremendous comfort in that, a joy in that, a kind of ease in your skin. It's lovely to see yourself like that. It's comforting. The texture of the fibres is very smooth and heavy. You know, they have a weight to them. It's not that the wig is heavy on my head. Actually, she's not heavy. This colour is chocolate swirl. It has got a darker root, probably around a number four. And starts to give a little bit of a more amber glow in the highlights throughout. Matches my own hair colour very well. 
And this is one of the reasons as to why I didn't leave the lace all the way down to here. I didn't need it. I feel that she looks better and more natural if I incorporate my own hair. So, I feel great. Just looking at myself here in the viewfinder, I feel like myself. I feel like myself again when I was 15 years old. Let's just pin her up so that we get an idea of what we've got. I haven't glued her down. And speaking about gluing, I have discovered this clip hair lace glue. You put this on your skin before laying your lace over the top of it. All right. It's very messy and it's very easy to get all the bits of fibers all tied up in the lace. So you have to think carefully about how you're going to execute this. The hold, you wouldn't believe how fabulous this hold is. It is so much more secure than it stays. <clears throat> it's non-water soluble. If it rains or whatever, it's not going to dissolve and you have to remove it with this clip hair glue remover. Clip hair is just one of the brands that's available to do this. There are so many others. I got I got those two on Amazon. Now let's see. It's lovely to be able to put her up at the sides just so as you can actually manage the volume of her. If 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 it's if you know you need to, for example, if you're going out to eat or something. but still enjoy that length. You can take some of the sides down. Now this happens to be my own hair. And you can in incorporate some of the fibers for more of a natural transition. sure that I would wear this style just during the day going out to the shops. I'm not sure that I would do that. I see going out on a romantic date in this hair. Yes, I do. Um, I, I, I'm not going to do anything with those baby hairs. I'm just going to kind of just allow them to just float there and look natural. Sort of molding them down onto my skin I don't think is very authentic to me it's much more natural to me to just allow the hair to just be and to move as it wants to I don't want anything too set and I don't particularly I'm not particularly desperate to have it very flat down up here if she wants to have that volume, I'm very happy with that. The nice thing about this style is that the layering is so pristine uh, and so expertly executed that, you know, as the hair moves, there's nothing that, that, that you can do to this hair that's going to make her look uncontained. Even though she's a really wild style, you can see that the tendrils fall naturally in whatever way she falls. You'll always have this beautiful tapered look. Let's look at the back. Amazing but I haven't glued her down in any way, and yet that strap around the back and the combs are holding everything in place. That, that's not bad, being able to do that, um, and not being worried that your wig is gonna fly off your head. That's never happened to me, thank goodness, and I'd hate for it to. I wonder what she would look like.
sort of in a ponytail. Let's just talk about what happens when we put our wigs up because as you put the hair away from the face you start to expose the seam where the cap meets your own hair, your own hairline. If you don't have hair to use to pull out and to soften that transition it can be a little bit of a problem and you may want to think about how you want to approach that. In my case pulling out see there's a little bit of lace there and normally it would be glued down all right but pulling out this hair it's like my own way of using permities in order to bulk up soften up and disguise that area and even as I go back I can easily pull out some of my hair at the nape do you see how it softens that whole area let's imagine that I have her up like this let's have a look I happen to think that having your hair up like this makes it so that a casual observer, unless they were studying you ever so closely, which most people don't, they don't get that close to you and they don't have the interest to, they would look at the lace part, they would look at how your natural hair was growing here at the side, they would look at how your hair was fluffing up here. I don't believe that you can see where the cap meets my own hairline. It's amazingly natural. Going out like this, if I was, for example, if it was summertime and I had an open back top, um, an open back dress, and I decided to wear my hair in a relatively low ponytail, you benefit from all of that hair at the back. And it says so much, it speaks so much um, about the look that you're going for. It's kind of a little bit gypsy, a little bit wild, moody, broody, that sort of thing. Totally up my street. I always, always used to look like that. Sometimes when I was younger, I used to give myself some blonde highlights, but I always had that dark, curly, wavy, wild hair. And it's so nice to see it again. It's so wonderful to see it again. I wonder whether I'm able to wear my hair in a higher ponytail. I wonder. Let's see. I know that using that lace um, glue that I talked to you about would hold that lace in place so even if it was pulling a little bit from the back I really don't think it would be a problem it's one way of cooling your neck off if you're getting hot I love this pin. It's wood and very, very simple. And I love that kind of simplicity. I'm going to see whether I can really treat this hair like my own and whack it up just like you would your own hair when you're hot and you just want something nice and quick. Just a nice, quick, casual way to get that hair up and just to see what she looks like.
you might want a few less tendrils. What do you think? I was so impressed when I found this collection of websites where I can get quite lovely dramatic hair, sometimes quite high density like this one, or something much less dense for a fraction of the price. And that's the other thing that really attracted me to it and made me feel like it was a really affordable option. Oftentimes, and although I love all of my other wigs and all of the other brands, everything has got its own thing that it offers. Um, sometimes I wanted something much bigger and much more of a statement and much more dramatic. I discovered as I went along in my wig journey that I actually quite like big hair. and But could never find anything quite as big as this, this sort of thing. And I haven't even touched upon Solstice. I'm going to do... Solstice deserves a video all of her own, which she's going to get. But um, I've, I've discovered um, an enjoyment in the daring, um, in the pushing the envelope. Um, going for something that I never have before has been a very interesting experience for me at the right time and the right place. So I hope that you have had a good idea of what Michaela can offer or a style like her. I'm going to link the website down below and the product. I'm going to link it. Um, you may want to start ex experimenting with things that you have never worn before to see how you feel in them, whether they're a viable option for you, and if you're comfortable going out with such gloriously thick hair that really makes much more of a splash. I've taken the time to just cut some of the edges, the corners of the lace front off, and take out some of my own hair at the temple, I think it makes it look a little bit better. I've taken it slightly out of its middle parting there with a little nod to a side parting. I'm more comfortable with it like this. This is how I would glue it down and I'm, I'm quite happy with what you can see of my own hairline. I think that it gives it as as natural a look as I'm able to give. I hope you've enjoyed Michaela and I will see you again very soon.